So today, and we are here, we got a few, Rob Bacon is back yet again. What's going on guys? So I just don't want to introduce myself. I'm Mike Mutzel. You're tuning into High Intensity Health. As always, if you're watching the replay or you're here, I am super excited that you were here. Today, we're going to review a new study that I do have, I believe, pop, there it is. It's right here. So um, this study actually, I mean, I've known for a while that customizing everything is important to life, right? Whether it's investments, whether it's relationships, whether it's physical fitness, whether it's you know embarking on an intermittent fasting protocol or nutritional ketosis, you got to personalize this. And I love your questions. I'm honored that you ask me, ask my wife, you DM me and say, hey, Mike, should I eat two meals a day in this window or one meal a day? You know, I don't really know. We need to personalize this, customize this, and we're going to talk about a paper today. But first, as always, I want to just check into the feed and let, let everyone and ask everyone that who's here live if they can hear me okay, because it would be really annoying if you can't hear me. So let me just see. How are we doing, friends? Someone says time difference. Um, thank you for not swearing. Yeah, I'm not swearing. Can you hear me okay? Hello, hello, hello. I know when you're watching the replay right now, you're so annoyed with this, but uh, can you hear me and see me me okay? I just want to just, just uh, I just like to check in. So um, I'm going to assume that everything is good. I just asked our audience. So uh, Jim D and Spive21, gosh, you both are like so loyal, so honest. I love y'all and I love all of you. So uh, if any point, if you're digging the content and you know what to do, please hit that like button, definitely subscribe. We do a lot. We, I fix my live stream software, but I've been told by people it's annoying when I talk about software. So let's just dive right into the study. This was a very interesting study and it has to do with epigenetics, nutritional epigenetics. If you missed our last few videos before we get into this individualizing fasting, let's just lay the groundwork for what epigenetics is and how fasting may be implicated in the narrative or the conversation of epigenetics and why you should care and how you can even test your own epigenome, which I recently did via my epigenetic age. So, okay. Right here is a phone. This is an iPhone X or whatever, okay? Apple's always updating the software. That changes the functionality of the phone, but that doesn't actually change the phone itself. It has the same, shh, I, I'm, I have my little daughter and a dog here, so that's what I was telling them to just be a little bit quieter so it doesn't come through. So even though Apple is updating the software, the phone is staying the same, but it changes the functionality of, their, of your phone. Every single cell in your body and tissue type has its own instruction manual and epigenome that's governing how that cell functions. The eye cell has different functions than the cells that make up your fingernails or your skin, even though they have the same instruction manual. The exact same instruction manual for both cells and both tissue types, but what makes this tissue differentiation is the epigenome. Nezi. Please knock it off. Okay, that's what's really fascinating about this. Now, here's what's even more fascinating is epigenetics is influenced by transgenerations. So your, what your mother ate or didn't ate, what your grandparents did or didn't eat, the stress that they were under, the toxins they were exposed to is influencing you right now. Which genes are being turned on or turned off and how they're being differentially expressed in certain situations such as fasting. And so what this study actually showed is that low birth weight babies compared to normal birth weight babies had a differential epigenetic response to different metabolic genes in both leptin and adiponectin, which is, I think it's very fascinating. Okay. So what does low birth weight babies have to do with the price of eggs in China? Okay, here's the situation that you need to understand. Individuals that were, are born in a low birth weight situation, they have been shown to have epigenetic aberrations in key metabolic pathways. And this was, and it makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint, right? That our bodies in utero, which is where a lot of the uh, developmental epigenetic imprinting is kind of laid down and the plasticity is really induced, um, kind of the, the structure, I should say, is induced uh, when we're being born, when we're, we're being developed in development in, in, the, in the uterus, okay? Now, if mom does not have enough nutrition around, it's the epigenome is changing such that when the baby is born, it's going to be hypersensitive to store energy as fat under the presupposition that uh, energy is going to be hard to find. Okay, so this is what makes epigenetics so unique. It adds a an additional <laughs> layer of control developmentally, so that children born into situations where food is scarce have a unique survival advantage to guess what to store energy as fat. 
Now, the challenge in our 21st century life is this. There's never a situation where there's essentially no energy or a food shortage. Food is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's available 24-7, 365. You can get mangoes. You can get any fruit uh, anytime you want. So that's the situation with low birth weight babies per the study. So they randomize individuals based upon their birth weight to stratify them into two different cohorts. They fasted these individuals for 36 hours, and guess what? This is what they found, and this is really unique. And if this doesn't motivate you to customize your fast and to start to think differently about how to structure and approach nutritional ketosis, intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding, prolonged fasting, and so forth, I really think that you should reconsider that, okay? So what they showed is that, I don't want to break down every little nuance or detail, but I do want you to realize that there was significant difference in gene expression in both leptin and adiponectin in individuals based upon their birth weight, okay? So what that really means is for a lot of us, you know, when you ask a guru a question, hey, how many hours a day do you fast? How many hours a day do you eat? How often do you do prolonged fast? Uh, you know, what What will start and stop a fast? All those questions are very individualized based upon your genetics, your epigenetics, your microbiome status, age, all that. All these things are so individual. They need to be considered from an individual standpoint and basis. And so what this, what this study it was one of the first to actually look at, it's not the only study, but one of the few studies that we have at present that shows that epigenetics is influenced by fasting and the fasting response is influenced by epigenetics, which I think is super fascinating, right? So you might be thinking, okay, Mike, I kind of understand where this conversation is going, but just break it down for me real quick. So here's just like the elevator pitch and you can end this video and go about your day after this, okay? If your mother experienced nutritional stress and or your father experienced some sort of nutritional stress when you were in the utero, your response to fasting could be different compared to someone who didn't have that same stress. So if you're predisposed to gaining weight, if you're predisposed to putting on body fat by just thinking about eating cookies, okay, your response to fasting is going to be different from someone who is naturally coughs and gets a six pack, okay? So what works for Sally may not work for Paul or Susie, right? It's going to be all different. So what I want you to think about is how to figure out objective biomarkers that you can measure and stick with a program without changing it fleetingly to see what's going to work or what's not going to work for you. So that's the take-home message here. We got to customize this. And what I was trying to convey with you on Saturday, unfortunately, the live stream just totally pooped out on me. Comcast just, I don't know what happened with, <laughs> with them. I am so sorry for that. But I got my office all set up now. So hopefully we should not have any bandwidth issues. But what I was trying to convey to you on that live stream was that, you know, wh whether or not you want to build muscle, whether or not you want to support longevity, or whether or not you want to burn fat, these are all different goals. And they are a little bit mutually exclusive. It's really hard to optimize longevity and build muscle at the same time, right? Because if you really want to induce maximal hypertrophy, you're going to have to be eating a lot of food, a lot of protein, a lot of training. That's going to be a lot of stress on the body. Now, if you're trying to optimize longevity, you may not want to put those stressors on the body and you may not want to constantly consume two to 300 grams of protein per day and, and stimulate muscle protein, you know, uh, st uh, stimulation and so forth via that route. Okay, so it's all customizable. And so that's why I wanted to sh share with you this uh, particular study. Now, the other part of this is like, okay, well, how do I or how do you know if epigenetically there is something wrong or something that you should be working on or maybe your fasting protocol is not ideal for your, for your genetics and epigenetics and condition? Well, there's the mydnh.com test. I recently did a video on this. I'm sorry that it's not in the YouTube cards, but I can go back to this video and update it and append it so it's there. But if you go back to our playlist, we talked all about epigenetics and how to test your epigenetic age. And that, I believe, would give you a nice insight into potentially what's going on with different methylation patterns in regards to metabolic processes. So it's something to consider. The other thing that you consider is just... Rob Bacon says, one size does not fit all, which is phenomenal, and I, I really like that. Um, so yeah, I just want to come on here and, and talk to you about this now. Just a small plug 
For those of you that are, do not yet know, we have over 10 do-it-yourself self-paced courses. We have students from all over the world that have been enrolled in this, oncologists, medical doctors, pharmacists, stay-at-home mothers. We have all kinds of people. Links are below the fasting, fitness, and flexible OMAD course is it goes into this in a little bit more depth. We tell you about the biomarkers, the blood work, the tests, different books, strategies, recipes, science to help you customize your fast so that you can meet your goals and when to fast to get the most out of your exercise program. Links are below, friends. Right now, we do have a promotion going on. 2020 Health will save you 40% off any of our courses now through January 15th, which is, I believe it's next Monday or next Tuesday. So you have a week to think about this, but that's a really good savings to get you great content to learn more about this. And we also have the Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass. I had a lot of doctor friends enroll in that. So links are below. Again, it's all science-based. It's good quality content. So Katie, all right. Um, Eddie says, I was born obese, 12 pounds, eight ounces. Eddie, damn, dude, what, what did your parents feed you, man? That's, that's amazing. So I don't know about, uh, heavy birth weight babies, what that has to do with, uh, epigenetics in terms of metabolism. So, um, interesting stuff. So, uh, for those of you that are watching the replay and are not here live, what I do on these is I'm going to answer some questions and I, I, I want to honor our live Members like Katie, like Jim G, like D Diane, uh, like Spive21, like Michelle, like Pavel, I want to answer your live questions. So if you're listening to this on the replay and you see me staring down, that's what I'm doing. I just want to let you all know what's what's going on here. So Katie says, very interesting. My brother and I were 9 and 10 pounds, respectively. The doctors were shocked because my mom was small. As kids are still now, as, as kids and still now, my brother and I are the furthest thing from large. That is so fascinating, and that has to do a, a little bit with what this study showed is kids that are born a little bit heavier or of normal weight may not have this epigenetic metabolic stress going on, and so therefore, they may have an easier time staying lean. And so this is what's interesting about testing your genes. And I have a good friend, Ben Lynch, who's coming up with a really great genetic testing technology called Stratagene. Um, but what's interesting about, it, let's say, Katie and her brother, their genes would, would be the same essentially, right? If their mother was stressed and their parents were stressed when they were being developed in the uterus. Now, the thing is, is even though their genes are the same, the epigenetic software that's controlling that genetic expression could be different. And that to me is so fascinating. And again, so the my DNA test is available. That will tell you your epigenetic age. And I can't say with concrete scientific evidence that knowing your epigenetic age would give you a little bit of a better insight into what's going on metabolically from an epigenetic standpoint. But I think it could be interesting and it could be revealing because there is a lot of mathematical algorithms at play uh, creating that software that enables us to figure out and ascertain our epigenetic clocks, the Horvath clock, and there's a, the Levine clock, and there's a few others. And I can't help but wonder that some of these different key methylation patterns in metabolic processes could be could have some aberrations, which would suggest an accelerated aging. Because we know that as we accelerated cellular age, because we know that as we age, uh, we become more insulin resistant. So I'm I'm interested about that. But Katie, thanks for your question. Um, Pavel says I don't hear any of the noise behind you. Okay. Cool, Pavel. I'm glad you can't hear my daughter and my dog making all kinds of noise behind me because it was frustrating me, but it's all good that you're here. Um, uh, Jim D says, smash that like button, viewers. Yes, please, please do that. Molly says, is there a link for that testing or do we have to find that video for that? So Molly B, this is what you do. You go back into my YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com forward slash high intensity health. Within that little once you land on my channel, you hit the search bar, just type in epigenetics in the search bar. And what that will do is take you to that video and you can learn a little bit more about it. Or, and I make no money from this. Believe me, I make zero dollars. I wish I had an affiliate link, but they don't do that. Okay. But if you go to my dnage.com and you use the promo code HIH20, I think it's is it HIH20 or 20? I think it's HIH20 or Mike20. You can save 20% off. Again, I make zero dollars off this. I always like, yeah, on this channel, we sell stuff, we have advertising, but I don't, when I talk about stuff, it's always from the heart, right? Our advertisers are only things that I that, that I take or products that I that I personally built and all that. So Molly, check it out. 
Chris, what's happening? Chris says, what are your thoughts on too much iron when eating primarily red meat? This is an amazing question. Saw a video about it that worried me. Chris, I am so grateful that you asked this question because it's a really good question and something that I have noticed with my lab since going more carnivore. I never thought that I would be saying I'm doing the carnivore diet. It's crazy. I'm not strict carnivore, but I, I think it's it makes life so easy. <laughs> it really does. And you feel you feel really good. So I did notice my iron and my ferritin increased. Okay. That doesn't mean that, that now they didn't increase into the how do I say it without swearing into the scary range that they, they, they increased a little bit above my baseline. Okay. Now iron is a pro oxidant in the body. It can cause issues. It can accumulate. You can accumulate iron within your liver. A lot of people we heard from, from, uh, Dr. Raj that iron accumulation within the liver is often mistaken as fatty liver disease. A lot of people have, you know, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease not from fat deposition, but from iron buildup. So on ultrasound, it looks like, oh my gosh, you have fatty liver, but in an MRI, diffusion weight imaged MRI, guess what? It's really iron buildup. So iron buildup is nothing to take lightly. I recommend donating blood. Everyone listening right now, this is why I tell all my clients, this is a free tip that could literally save your life. Donate blood twice a year. Just put it on your calendar, make it happen. It's good for humanity, it's good for you. Now, let me add some qualifications about who should or shouldn't donate blood. Uh, if you're an anemic female and you're, you know, you're a, an endurance athlete, yep, obviously do some labs beforehand. But most, especially middle aged and older men and postmenopausal women, could do wonders for their body by donating blood twice a year. Okay, what's that going to do? That's going to help to decrease uh, arterial and blood viscosity. Blood and iron and hemoglobin and hematocrit, it's not just iron, but the iron-associated proteins, the RDW, hemoglobin, hematocrit, that can create thick, stagnant blood. That's really a lot of more sheer pressure for your heart and your cardiovascular system. So donating blood could be one of the easiest things you can do to really get out in front of reducing uh, heart disease. So amazing question. Teresa, thanks for, for saying agreeing with me that that's a good question. Rainier, quit wagging her tail. Okay, Dwight Clark says, what about too much vitamin A for eating organ meats? Dwight Clark, this is a great question. I, there's there's just simply um, not that much stored carotenoids um, in organ meats to my knowledge, unless you're eating a ton of parathyroid or something like that. But I, I really think that you'd have a hard time overdosing vitamin A. So um, Dwight, I, I, I appreciate your concern. I think that's a great question, uh, but I don't think you would have that issue. Okay. Rudy, 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 Sam, what's up? Rudy Studios in the house. Sam is starting his podcast all about, about mental health. If you all want to learn more about mental health and strategies that can naturally uplift your mood, hit that like button. Let us know in the comment bar. We'll get Sam on. He's interviewing a lot of people to help, you know, bring more awareness to mental health, which I think is a big deal, especially amongst younger generations and so forth. So Robert has an amazing question. He says, I've been in ketosis for over six months and lost over 60 pounds and feel Rainier. Rainier's wagging his tail really hard. Hey, dude, I know you're excited that you're on YouTube, but can you chill out? Okay, so back to the question. Robert says, I've been in ketosis for over six months and lost 60 pounds and feel amazing. Hats off to you, Robert. That's amazing. More energy than I ever had. I'm going to start a trucking YouTube channel and we'll try to help truck drivers lose weight. Robert, I love that. I absolutely love that. So I want to thank you for your inspiration. The world needs more people like you. And uh, having been like a... a a road warrior at one point, never a truck driver necessarily, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I used to drive a ton and I, I, I would see truck drivers a lot. And I know there's some camaraderie and you can, you know, talk to folks on the radio and, and communicate with them. The downside to that occupation uh, is you're sitting a lot, right? And, and so um, metabolic flexibility is induced not only through your diet, but also through exercise. And so one recommendation, if possible, Robert, uh, I would love to know if, it, if this is even doable with that occupation, is to pull over and stop every 90 minutes and do some air squats, do some push-ups, do some sprints. This is, my wife and I just drove back, we did about 700 mile drive uh, around New Year's, and uh, you know we got out and we every 90 minutes, it was like set on my phone, we stopped, we did some air squats, some push-ups, some lunges, we moved. The idea is to move some blood around. And so I think that would be uh, interesting. Okay, 
Mike T says, do you have an opinion on, on prioritizing exercise and performance versus fasting? Uh, yeah, Mike T, what's up? I do have an opinion. I always prioritize exercise, always. Maybe that's just my bias, but I've never seen anyone that only fasted that has a body that I would want. And I'm not trying to be a dick or condescending or anything like that, but I'm just saying like most people that talk about fasting are, you know, they're like healthy and stuff like that, but they're not ripped. They're not shredded. They're not, and I like not only looking like I work out, but I like working out and I like being able to move weights and, and do stuff in the gym, not just lollygag around and throw some, you know, some machines and, and stuff like that and, and do, you know, cables, right? I like to lift weights. I think there's a lot of benefit. I know, I don't think scientists w agree and have you know, unequivocally documented the health benefits of exercise, everything from improved mental well-being to brain health to reducing cardiovascular disease risk and preventing age-related muscle loss. I mean, there's a ton of benefits to resistance training in particular. So I always prioritize exercise, always, hands down. Some people may disagree with me. I, I know there's people in the ketogenic community, like, you know, um, Jeff Folick, I've heard him say, Exercise alone is not that great for weight loss. And I, I would totally disagree with that, but maybe he's going off the, the large cohort of you know, studies looking at exercise versus dietary change. But for me, I'm always prioritizing exercise. So that's just me. You could disagree with me. Uh, I know some people have changed their lives with fasting, but I think exercise and fasting are two sides of the same coin because as we talk about in our e courses, especially the Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass, which is linked below, the, the physiologic adaptations associated with fasting mirror those and are very similar to those associated with exercise. Uh, if, we, if you read David Sinclair's book, you know, Lifespan, and, and you hear him interviewed, he talks all about you know, these uh, cellular stress response pathways and the longevity pathways, sirtuins, AMPK, mTOR inhibition, mitochondrial biogenesis, all these pathways, guess what? They're shared. Fasting and exercise are two sides of the same coin. So I, I think you need to do both. That's that's my personal opinion. And Mike T, maybe that was a longer answer than you really wanted, but that's just, I get fired up on this stuff. And no, I haven't had caffeine yet. Um, okay, so uh, Tamini says, uh, spot to one, thanks. If you want to maintain on all parts of your body or only loosen the belly. Uh, so Tamini, I, I missed the upper part of your comment, but the idea that there's something known as spot reduction has been thoroughly debunked. You can't spot reduce necessarily, right? Now, you know, if you're taking prednisone or you're taking a corticosteroid, you might preferentially store more body fat around the abdomen. Uh, so then thereby when you're losing body fat by getting off the drugs and exercising and doing this stuff, you might notice a proportional increase in the loss of fat around the belly, but that doesn't mean that there's spot reduction exercises necessarily. So this is why when I see people doing sit-ups, when I see people doing these weird burnouts for their glutes, I wonder why are they... <laughs> Look on the uh, lower right, left hand side of the screen. We have we have a little we have a trickster here, don't we? We do. We have a little trickster behind me. Anyways, there's no such thing as uh, as spot reduction. Anne P Pence has an, an amazing question. She says, "What's the purpose of knowing epigenetics?" Well, Anne, this is really interesting. Let me just ask you this question. Okay, so let's say you on your phone, your favorite app. Let's just pick a pick an app that you like to use. Maybe it's YouTube. <laughs> Maybe it's, maybe it's Audible. I love Audible, right? Let's say one day you open your phone and you're trying to use Audible and it's not working. And let me ask you, what's the first thing you're going to do? The first thing you're going to do is go to the app store on your phone and you're going to see what's going on with the software. Was there a software update recently to Audible or to the YouTube app or to the whatever? And if there wasn't recently a software update to that, you might begin to ask yourself, well, is the software on my phone out of sync? Like what's going on? Why? I used to be able to use Audible or YouTube or podcast or, or mail or whatever on my phone. Good, but now it's not working. Okay, so this is the same thing going on with epigenetics. So, so Anne, if you feel amazing, 
you have no depression, no mood disorders, no body composition issues, your blood sugar regulation is amazing, your memory is amazing, your energy is amazing, your bowel movements are amazing, you have no inflammation, you have no health issues whatsoever and you feel 110% every day, then there's probably no need for you to know anything about your epigenetics. However, Anne, and anyone else listening, if you feel depressed, lethargic, if you have random GI issues, if you're, you're not sleeping well, right? If your hormones are off, if you're wondering, where's this body fat? Why can't I burn this, this layer? But what's going on? That is when you want to discover and take some, a deeper introspection into your epigenome because guess what? Your epigenetics is malleable, right? You, can't, you may not be able to, you know, there's not so much plasticity that you can remodel it overnight, but there's some things that you can do once you know that and uh, know what's going on. So, Anne, does that help? I, I hope so. Um, Jose says, can we build muscle while fasting and on HRT? Jose, I would say yes. Um, it depends on the dosages and the form of HRT that you're on, whether you're on trochees, whether you're on pellets, whether you're on subcutaneous injections, in intramuscular injections, what type of testosterone, how much, and so forth. But yes, I would say you can. Now, this is an interesting question because it, it becomes, okay, well, the, the, more, the, the, the longer the fasting window, the harder it becomes to, to, to build muscle mass and the easier it becomes to burn fat and the closer you get to pivoting and pushing on that longevity gas pedal. So, so Jose, if you're really trying to put on a lot of size, I would say then, then maybe do like a 16-8 or 14-10, you know, something like that. Maybe don't try to go for the one meal a day. Now, of course, if you have a lot of weight to lose, a lot of fat to lose, then that becomes a different conversation. So, um, okay. Uh, Diane says, yes, yes, and yes. Dan, cool. Uh, Rebecca says, your daughter is cute. She is. She's a good one. We got, we got lucky. God is good. Uh, Robert says, are you familiar with the Dr. Boz score? Is it really a proxy for insulin? I'm not. Um, I'm familiar with Dr. Boz in so much as I know she has a YouTube channel. People have told me about her. I don't watch her stuff. Um, so I don't really know about her score. I think she's she's talking about the glucose ketone index, which, yeah, is a reasonable approximation to to look at insulin. But the best way to look at insulin is is through testing. Um, so yeah, so that's that's why I know about that. Um, so Dracula says, I have great taste. That's this person's name. Great YouTube name. Uh, longevity without muscle control means you can't take care of yourself and move around, walk the pets, carry groceries, play with grandchildren, etc. I don't think you can separate them. Dracula says, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Just give me a second, guys, because this is just, this is amazing. Dracula, I love that. I, oh, shoot. Come on, screenshot software. What's going on? All right. Hold up. Ah. All right. I don't know why I'm... I can't take a screenshot, but Dracula hit the nail on the head. So the, the, the question was, is exercise needed or should you prioritize fasting or exercise earlier? And Dracula hit it on the head saying, well, of course you got to prioritize exercise because life without movement is unlivable. There is no such thing. So I, I'm so glad that we're, we're on the same page here. Um, so, so thanks for that amazing question and comment. Um, how has this live been so far, friends? How are we doing? Do you like it? All right. Why isn't my software working here? All right. I look funny. <laughs> um, okay. Well, anyway, um, I think that's it. So Daniel Smith has a great question here. He says, in conjunction with weight training on the fed days can be beneficial. Uh, it works for me personally. I totally agree with you that uh, you need to customize your routine. I agree, my man. So uh, friends, I I'm super grateful that you're here. If you're enjoying the these lives, just hit that like button. That lets me know that I should do more of these. And I'm sorry for the hiatus. We had a software glitch, software update. I use this little black magic tool. I know you all don't like when I talk about this stuff, but uh, I just want you to know why you know we haven't done a live. And they changed their software. Speaking of software and epigenetics, and so I couldn't do the couldn't do the dang lives. So that's what's going on. Uh, also, friends, we have a new berberine formula over at our website myoscience.com. That's m y o x c i e n c e dot com. A new berberine, and so this actually is a little bit different than the other top selling berberine that we have that has alpha lipoic acid. This is just the pure berberine 
hydrochloric acid, bourbon hydrochloride, uh, you have a 90 count container. So this can last you uh, about two months, depending upon how you do it. I recommend kickstarting your intermittent fasting where you're fast with berberine that has some amazing properties to get your ketones jacked up. I don't have this uh, in the link below, but you can go to our website, myoscience.com and use the promo code HIH to save on that. It's a really cool formula and there's some, t there's some amazing research on berberine. So, um, that is about it, friends. Um, I'm so grateful that you're here. And I'm most, I'm most excited about the fact that we didn't have a glitch, right? Uh, you all have been so loyal over the years, you know. Um, we've had so many software issues and like bandwidth issues, and I can't control that stuff. I mean, I do the best I can. And uh, when Comcast takes a, a poop on me in, in the middle of the live, I feel really, really bad. And I'm just, I'm grateful that, that you, you stick around. It really means a lot. And so um, that means that I study. That means that I stay up late. That means that I synthesize stuff to, to share with you research. And uh, hopefully over time, we can just make the world a healthier place and help people. So um, yeah, I'm honored. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, Harriet, Mike T., uh, Rebecca, everyone. I I'm just honored that you're here. Hope you have an awesome evening. Or if you're watching the replay, hope the rest of your day is amazing. Uh, get out there and uh, get some sunshine, get some exercise. You know, hey, uh, Buckwheat. Come here. One second, guys. One second. <laughs> Tell them what we're going to do. She, she's being shy. We're going to go for a hike. And so what we do at night, um, because it is dark here in Seattle, we have headlamps that we wear. So we're going to wear headlamps in the forest and we're going to go get outside and, and get a hike. So anyway, have an awesome, awesome one, guys. We'll catch you soon. Thanks for tuning in.